Okay. Like Peter, I've had um, quite a lot of applications with the wrong hospital, and that's the first one in the trash. So this year, I don't think we'll see any of those. Um, the other thing I'd like to say too is um, just to reinforce what Peter said, that we've only got two um, interview pos intern positions at St Vincent's Hospital, and last year we had 100 applicants. Um, it's very difficult for us to even cull because, as Peter said too, there's very little difference in what people have done at this stage of their career. And I suppose it's, a hard, it's very hard if you don't get an interview and you don't get the job and people are very disappointed. But I think it's also very important to realise that there's lots and lots of other opportunities later. I think sometimes people think, oh, I'm never going to go to that hospital again. I'm never going to try for another job. They rejected me once. Well, I think that is not something that you should think at all. Um, I personally have suffered a lot of rejection before I got my job in a hospital. I've come from a community pharmacy background. Um, I decided after a period of time that I would like to work in hospital. I went to the big prestigious hospitals because it was a long time ago but the jobs were scarce in those days and I got a number of rejections. But I went to St Vincent's and the director of pharmacy there said to me, well you need to do this, you need to do this and you need to just keep applying and, and she gave me a lot of hints. And that day I thought, hmm, okay, I'll do that, and I'd like your position one day. And after all my rejections, I did get a position one day, and I'm still there many, many years later. So, um, you know, if at first you don't succeed, always keep trying. Um, the, there's a few things that, when we get down to the interview, I think it's important to, um, for you to know. What we've said is that it's very difficult for us to determine from CVs what's the difference between the different candidates. So at the interview, we want to learn something about you. We want to know what makes you tick. We want to know um, whether you're a good fit for our department. And that's a really important thing for you to be able to get across. Um, and there's some things that I think you need to be aware of to try and help that to happen. Um, first of all, we see so many really nervous people, particularly if you do your interviews before all the other hospitals, you get a lot of people who haven't done an interview before. And that's very hard. So I think when you go for your first interview particularly, you need to just relax, take a few deep breaths and think, okay, this is my opportunity to let them know about me. You've already done really well to even get to that stage. We want to know more about you and we think you could be good if you've got that far. Um, sometimes the interviewers might be interviewing all day and they might you know, have rolled off the same questions for a long time. If they're not really clear about a question and you don't really get what they mean, ask them by all means. You, know, you can ask them quite politely and you can, you can say, look, I'm really not sure what you meant by this question. Um, would you be able to rephrase it? Or I'm not sure whether you meant either this or this. Would you be able to let me know? Um, that's important. If some question really throws you, and sometimes if you are nervous, a question can really throw you and it just means that you can go to pieces. Um, it's important then that you just take that breath you know, take a moment, and if I was interviewing, I wouldn't mind if you said, look, um, I just don't feel comfortable with answering that question at the moment, or I just would like a little bit longer to think about that question, can we come back to it and, you know, and go through the other questions first. I don't mind if people ask that to me, and, and people have at different times. Um, the other thing too is, it's, it's good to be succinct when you're answering questions, but thoughtful. Um, Again, people feel under pressure to answer straight away. Um, it takes thinking time if you're going to think of situations or um, times when you've acted in a particular way that you want to tell us about. We can all wait and we can, we, we're happy to wait while you think and just get yourself together and then tell us. So don't worry about having those hesitations. You can, you know, we can sit there for as long as it takes you to think and get your act together. So I think it's important to, uh, when you go to the interview, just Get yourself together and be ready that if you meet with any sort of adversities or things that throw you, you've thought about a strategy to get yourself through so that you can give us uh, an opportunity to know you a little bit better. And I think that's, that's a really important thing as well. Um, the other thing too is to think about the different hospitals. Erin talked about knowing what the specialty of the hospital is. Um, if you're interested in kids, it's important when you apply for St Vincent's that you know that we don't have kids at St Vincent's because if that's, you know, if, if you've decided you really want to work in a hospital with kids, 
maybe you should apply for one of the other hospitals. Or maybe you should come to an interview with me first and then go to an interview with Peter after you've, after, you know, after you've had a bit more interview experience. But there's a few things, though, to think about, you know, um, is it a small hospital or a large hospital? What's the best fit for you? Where would you feel most comfortable? Um, what's the specialties of that hospital? At St Vincent's, we're in a city hospital, a smallish hospital. But uh, some people may not feel comfortable with the patients we have. We have a lot of HIV AIDS patients. We have a lot of mental health patients. Um, there's drug and alcohol problems in that area of the city. Some people might find that they would rather work somewhere else. That's fine, but it's good for you if you're thinking about when you, where you want to work to work out what sort of hospital you're comfortable in working, in working at because um, we don't want you to have a miserable life because you really don't feel comfortable working in that sort of situation. Um, what else would I like to say? Don't discount country hospitals because if you do an internship at a country hospital, you'll get a very good grounding in hospital pharmacy and you'll get to see and do more things because sometimes in a smaller hospital, you're allowed to do more things. But sometimes in a big hospital, you can only do this, you can only do that. But, so don't discount having to go to one of the smaller hospitals because you'll find that it will be very satisfying. And all the people that I've spoken to that have done time, not done time, <laughs> have experience at a, at a, a, a rural, rural setting in a hospital have found it very, very rewarding. So, um, so don't discount the, any, any of the, the rural places. I would agree with that. I think I worked in a small hospital to start off with and I found that really useful because you do get those sort of opportunities. Also, I think we really value people who come to us um, from smaller hospitals because they do have a lot of initiative and they've, done lots of, they've taken responsibility sometimes more than people in larger hospitals. And in the future, PBS will be coming into the New South Wales State Hospital System and we'll be looking for people that have PBS experience. Because a lot of us working in a hospital, especially us fossils, it's been a long time <laughs> since we've done anything with the PBS. So we'll be looking for people with that broader range of skills. We recently employed a number of community pharmacists. Um, we had, I think, in the past, really only employed hospital pharmacists, but we've had um, a few new positions created recently for transitional aged care, which is um, bridging the gap between hospital and community and looking after people when they go home from hospital. And the people that we found that fit best into those sorts of roles are often people who have, who've had community experience. They're much more attuned to what the issues are for people when they go home. So, um, again, we are employing more people didn't get a hospital job straight away, um, there were many, many other opportunities to come to the hospital later. There will be more jobs too for extended hours, mm -hmm. and we find people that have been working in community, they're quite happy to work till 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and be working independently. A lot of hospital pharmacists, you know, always feel good when there's another four or five around, <laughs> but often the community, that's it, you're the pharmacist. So they're quite happy to work independently and, um, you know, and to sort of cover those hours. Um, I think the good thing about the rural jobs too, they usually interview first, they usually have put all the applications out first because they want to lock people in before you get all the, once the uh, city jobs come out, so that can be some good experience as well, even though they'll probably be phone interviews rather than in person, you can get you some good interview experience. I know I did a few, I interviewed for Alice Springs Hospital um, over the phone and that was my first interview, it was terrible, um, <laughs> but I, you know, you know, I even asked, they asked me a question about diabetes and I said, do you mind if I get my AMH out? And I'm like, why am I asking them? I can't see you get my AMH out. And they, they said, oh, we just assumed you'd had everything in front of you. <laughs> it's terrible. Anyway, um, 
I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, SHPA and what we do, obviously. Thank you so much to everyone that's here tonight um, um, on behalf of the SHPA and a lot of people from our branch committee um, who have given up their time to come tonight. Uh, but everyone's kind of mentioned what SHPA can do um, for hospital pharmacists and for interns and students. So I thought I'd run through a few things. I don't know whether anyone, everyone's had a look so far at the New South Wales Health website and um, jobs. So you just click on here, jobs, health jobs. Uh, and then you get the search engine where you can search for all the jobs. So there's quite a few intern jobs already up. I think there's Goulburn, um, Wagga Wagga. Um, it's quite most of the um, south coast. I think it was Batemans Bay. That'd be a nice place to live. I can live there. A very nice hospital pharmacist. Oh, there you go. It's <laughs> a good recommendation. Um, and uh, Hunter New England as well. So uh, John Hunter, who if you are into Pete's, have a big Pete's unit there. Um, so, you know, have a look around there. Oh, for, you click on there, follow the links. It's, any fool can do it. it. You know, there are links to the online applications and everything, but um, that is how you go about it. And sometimes it depends what keyword they put in. Put in pharmacist, put in pharmacy, put in a few different things. Make sure you find all the jobs on there because sometimes they can be a little bit more challenging to find. So just you know, have a fiddle around with it. Um, just that everyone always asks about wages, so I thought I'd be blunt with you. These are the award wages. Um, Hospital on the, um, the left and community on the right, just so you know. Um, hopefully, I know that there are, but there are, you know, interns, you will get paid award to wages in community more often than not. I really hope there aren't too many pharmacists that get paid award wages, but I know there are. Um, so, you know, that, that's the difference at the moment. And this is the new um, pharmacy community award that came out last year, and this hospital one is being renegotiated at the moment, so that's only going to go up. But these are all publicly available on New South Wales Health website and um, on the Fair Work Australia website too, so I've got to look them up. Um, yes, shocking, I know. When I was sitting in your position, it was the hospital pharmacist coming up here and saying, oh, look, you do it more for the love, the money is not that good, you know. Intern, you get really good, well paid, and then in the community, you're getting $45 an hour. That award wage, even as a pharmacist manager, is $25 an hour. 